Hey, this is Mr. Ray, and welcome back to Pre-AP Chemistry. This is Unit 3, Ionic Compounds for Week 5. Yes, we are in a new unit called Ionic Compounds, which is all about that thing that'll give you 5 to 10 years in prison. It's a salt. And so, ionic compounds, yes, salt is an ionic compound. So, sodium chloride, something like that. We're going to learn all about that in this video. We're going to be taking a look at common oxidation numbers and polyatomic ions. Ooh, that sounds scary. It's really not that scary. And we're going to be taking a look at the structure and properties and particular particulate models of ionic compounds. And last but not least, an oldie but a goodie, which is called Coulomb's Law, Coulombic Attractions. And so let's get to what's called common oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers is a fancy phrase, which means charge. It's the charge, the typical charge on an element when it becomes an ion. You can see the alkali metals here, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, they all have one valence electron, so they will tend to become positive one oxidation number because that one electron is on the outside of, uh, it's, it, it's on the outside of the noble gas, outside of its principal quantum energy level, and it's outside, it's the least attracted, therefore it will have the lowest ionization energy. The alkaline earth metals, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, these will tend to become positive too because of the two valence electrons. Something like aluminum, since aluminum is in 3s2, 3p1, those valence electrons, there's three valence electrons, it will tend to become positive three. Let's jump over to the halogens here. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. These are non-metals, which means they will tend to lose, sorry, gain one electron, become negative one, gain one electron, since that would make it a fully filled S and P subshells. And you can see oxygen, sulfur, selenium, these will tend to become positive two for the most part. Nitrogen, phosphorus will tend to become negative, sorry, negative two and negative three. My bad there. Oxygen will tend to become negative two and nitrogen will become negative three. Now, this is just normally what happens. Um, you can see there are exceptions as we would take a look. Uh, something like zinc here and cadmium and mercury, these will tend to become positive two. Why will zinc and cadmium become positive two? They will lose the two electrons from the 4s subshell first, not the 3d10, but the 4s, so they will become positive two. Silver will become positive one, and the rest of the alkali metal, alkali metals will tend to lose uh, the different amounts, maybe positive one, maybe positive two. Uh, they will lose different amounts of electrons. So what happens in ionic compounds, say something, we have something like sodium chloride, sodium chloride. Well, sodium will tend to lose one electron, and sodium will tend to become a positive one. Chlorine will tend to become a negative one charge. And so you can see to, all ionic compounds will, will electrically uh, come to some neutrality. They will cancel each other out. So you just need a one-to-one -one ratio, which means the formula for it for sodium chloride is NaCl. There's gonna be a positive one charge and a negative one charge and a negative and a positive and a positive and a negative. And these will become electrically neutral. You need a one-to-one -one ratio here in order to cancel out. And so sodium chloride's formula is NaCl. The Na is called a cation, a positive charge. The negative is called an anion, negative charge. So with the cation and anion, these will attract each other electrostatically and become a solid ionic compound. Well, if we have something like magnesium chloride, magnesium will tend to lose two electrons and become positive two. Chlorine will tend to gain one electron, but you can see that is not electrically neutral. You have positive two here. So in order to cancel a positive two, you need two negatives. Therefore, the formula will be MgCl2. For every positive two charge, you need two chloride ions in order to cancel that out. And so the chemical formula for magnesium chloride will be MgCl2. Let me give you uh, one more example here. Let's uh, take a look at something like aluminum and oxide, aluminum oxide. And so aluminum is going to be a positive three charge because there's three valence electrons with low ionization energies. Oxygen will tend to gain two electrons. Now, you can see that is not electrically neutral. You have a positive three and a negative two. 
How would you get that to become electrically neutral? Well, uh, you need two of these aluminums, so aluminum two, and you need three of these oxides. And so you can see two aluminums would give you aluminum plus three and aluminum plus three. That's an overall charge of positive six. You need three of these oxides, O negative two, O negative two, and O negative two. And you can see that gives you negative six overall charge, and that cancels each other out. Therefore, the formula for aluminum oxide will be Al2O3. Now, things like iron, you can see iron can be, uh, you can have iron two oxide, iron two oxide. You can also have iron three oxide. And you can see iron has different charges. It's a transition metal. It has different charges. So if you have iron two oxide and irons, that two means iron is positive two, oxide is negative two, does that cancel each other out? It sure does, which means you just needed a one-to-one -one ratio. The formula for iron two oxide would be FeO. But iron three oxide, iron will lose three electrons and oxygen will lose two electrons. And so that's not electrically neutral. You're going to need two irons and you're going to need three oxygens to cancel those charges out. And that will be the formula for iron three three oxide. So you can see iron can sometimes lose two electrons, sometimes lose three electrons. Because it's a transition metal, it will have a little bit of both there. And those are common oxidation numbers. And so we also have things called polyatomic ions. Polyatomic means exactly what it says. Poly means many atom ions, many atom ions. And you're going to get a little chart like this of many atom ions, and you'll be able to do any kind of uh, chemical formula using your polyatomic ions. Now, keep in mind these polyatomic ions, this whole thing, CO3, has a negative two charge for carbonate. PO4, PO4, the whole thing has a negative three charge for phosphate. So let me give you an example of something like, uh, example of sodium phosphate. Sodium phosphate, we know sodium's in the alkali metals, so sodium's gonna be positive one. Phosphate, you can see, the entire PO4 will have a negative three charge. Do those cancel each other out? No. For every negative three charge, you need three positives. So we need three sodium ions here. So the formula will be Na3PO4. You only need one of these PO4s, and that will cancel each other out. And you can see one of these PO4s, these PO4s, you can see the whole thing is a negative three charge which means you can see we need a sodium positive one, a sodium positive one, and a sodium positive one, and that will make what's called an ionic salt, an ionic compound, okay? Let me give you maybe two more examples here. Let's take a look at something like nitrate. Let's take a look at uh, magnesium, magnesium nitrate. We know magnesium is in the alkaline earth metals, which means magnesium's positive two. Nitrate, you can see the whole thing, the whole NO3, has a negative one charge. Do these charges cancel each other out? No. So for every positive two, you need two negatives. So you need two of these nitrates, two of these nitrates. So the formula is gonna be MgNO32, and you can see I put parentheses around the NO3 because we need two of these NO3s because every NO3 is a negative one charge, okay? Let me give you one last example. Let me give you something like calcium, Phosphate, calcium phosphate. So calcium is positive, calcium is positive two. It's in the alkaline earth metals. All of phosphate is negative three. Do those cancel each other out? No. How many, how many of each will I need to cancel these out? Well, you're going to need two calciums, or sorry, three calciums because you need positive six overall. You're going to need two of these phosphates because two times negative three is negative six. That cancels everything out. So you need two particles of your PO4, three particles of your calcium ions, and that will make an ionic compound of polyatomics. Okay? Now, all of your ionic compounds, they are fixed, just like we said. They're electrically neutral. They're held together by electrostatic attractions. The positives attract the negatives. The negatives attract the positives. The positives attract the negatives. The negatives attract the positives. And you can see that will give us a solid. This is kind of a one-to-one -one ratio here. This would be something like potassium fluoride, potassium fluoride, where potassium, the cation is positive one, the fluoride is negative one, and you can see this is going to be a solid at room temperature. 
This is not going to conduct electricity as a solid because the positive and negative ions are stuck in place. They're fixed in a lattice structure. And which, since they're fixed in a lattice structure, this is going to have a very high melting point. It's going to take a lot of energy to rip this, these electrostatic attractions apart. And so they don't conduct electricity as a solid. It's very brittle because when you have positives and negatives and positives and negatives, and you have negatives and positives and negatives and positives, the reason it's brittle or it can break apart, even though it's got a high melting point, is these two layers, if they just slide over one, can you see they will uh, repel each other and it will break off. So it's a very brittle solid. Now, if you take this solid and you dissolve it in water, now you have in water, you would have positives and negatives that are free. They're, they're not in one local fixed structure, so it will conduct electricity. The other thing is, if you make this into a liquid, if you melt this into a liquid, now the positives and negatives are free to move around, and so it will conduct electricity as a liquid or a solid. Last but not least, let's talk about Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law, if you remember back to physics, is the force of electricity. The force of electrostatic charges is KQQ over R squared. What do the Qs mean? The Qs are charges. So you can see, as we have a positive and negative, these will attract each other. And the greater the positive or negative, if you have positive 2 and negative 2, this is going to be an even greater attraction to each other, aren't they? Well, the distance is on the denominator, which means the further distance these, these charges are away from each other, the less the attraction, the less the attraction. So it all deals with the charges or oxidation numbers and the sizes or the ionic radii. So we can kind of predict melting points. If we take a look at these four substances and we want to predict which one is going to have the highest melting point, which one is going to have the most electrostatic attractions, which one will take the most lattice energy or the energy to break the lattice ionic bonds? Well, let's take a look. Rubidium and iodine, that's going to be positive one and negative one. Cesium and iodine, iodide is positive one and negative one. Magnesium and oxide, alkali metal, positive two, negative two. Strontium sulfide, positive two, negative two. So right away, which ones are going to have on the basis of charges alone which one is going to have the greatest electrostatic attraction? Well, we're down to C and D, aren't we? The positive 2, negative 2 is going to be a greater electrostatic attraction. Well, now we're going to go to sizes. And magnesium and oxide, magnesium, uh, its ions, when it loses two electrons, it goes down into the N equals 2 principal quantum energy level. And the oxide, when it gains 2, it still is in the N equals 2. The strontium, when it loses two, it's going to be in the N equals four principal quantum energy level. The sulfide is going to be in the N equals three. Can you see the magnesium oxide, these positive two and negative two, they're going to be much smaller, much closer together, which means that will take the most energy to melt, the most energy to break those ionic bonds. And that is a great overview of unit three ionic compounds week five. I hope that Made sense. I'll catch you in class, guys. Bye.